Good afternoon. I'm Stephanie Krauss, a Senior Regulatory Counsel in CEDAR's Office of Regulatory Policy. Because of our unique role in the center, we don't always have opportunities to interact with applicants and researchers, so I'm happy to have the opportunity today to provide an overview about how regulatory policy guides decision-making in CEDAR, explain how ORP is organized and our role in facilitating regulatory policy objectives in CEDAR, and provide representative examples of our contributions to CEDAR's COVID-19 pandemic response. I'll start briefly with explaining what regulatory policy is and how it helps guide policy development and decision-making in CEDAR. As a regulatory agency, FDA derives its authority from applicable laws and regulations. Regulatory policy is therefore the backbone of everything we do in CEDAR. Regulatory policy provides a framework for developing policy and making decisions in CEDAR and helps ensure that our policy and decisions are consistent with statutes, regulations, and other decisions we've made. Our program offices make review decisions and consult on regulatory policy issues. Program offices may have program-specific policy shops and at the center level, we have the Office of Regulatory Policy and the Office of Medical Policy to provide oversight and leadership as part of our overall coordination and oversight of policy development. Now that we understand how important regulatory policy is to everything we do in CEDAR, I'll talk a bit about how my office helps to develop and implement regulatory policy in CEDAR. The Office of Regulatory Policy, which I'll refer to as ORP, is the overarching regulatory policy shop for CEDAR that provides oversight and leadership to the center in the development of policies and procedures related to the regulation of human drugs. ORP is responsible for managing and the development of new regulations and policies under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act and other applicable authorities. ORP develops original policy and works with other CEDAR offices to address policies that are significant to the center and potentially cross-cutting. Generally, ORP develops and reviews regulations, guidance, and other documents relating to the regulation of human drugs, leads efforts to resolve issues cited in citizen petitions and in the development of detailed responses to those petitions, advises and assists on the scope, applicability, and meaning of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act and other applicable laws, regulations, and policies and assists with developing responses to new legislative proposals. ORP also provides overall policy direction, coordination, and clearance of all requests for information that raises issues regarding the appropriateness of the disclosure and directs the design, development, and implementation of information disclosure policies throughout CEDAR to ensure compliance with the Freedom of Information Act, Privacy Act, and other statutes and FDA's information disclosure regulations. Let's discuss how ORP is structured. ORP is divided into five divisions, four divisions of regulatory policy and one division of information disclosure policy, which I'll call DIDP. We appreciate the protection of your confidential information is important, so I will discuss DIDP in a separate slide. Our divisions of regulatory policy are divided for administrative purposes only. These divisions include our regulatory and senior regulatory councils, many of whom have expertise in particular areas. For me, that includes policies relating to real world evidence, drug development and approval standards, clinical studies and research, artificial intelligence and statistical policy. Others have specialties across many areas, including exclusivity, opioid policy, implementing the new OTC user fee program, biological product and biosimilar regulation, advertising and promotion, compounding, product labeling, drug importation, manufacturing and supply policies, and many other areas. As I said earlier, FDA takes seriously its obligation to protect confidential information as required under applicable laws and regulations while balancing the important goals of public transparency and accountability. DIDP, handles all issues relating to the disclosure of CEDAR-related documents. This includes developing and advising on policies relating to information disclosure and processing and responding to requests for information under the Freedom of Information Act for CEDAR documents. DIDP proactively reviews, redacts, and posts on FDA's website CEDAR drug approval packages, which is a legal requirement 
under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act for drugs and the Public Health Services Act for biological products. DIDP also responds to requests for CEDAR documents made by external parties, such as members of Congress and via court orders. Now I'd like to highlight some of the important broader policy work in our center and ORP's role in that. CEDAR's regulatory responsibilities have become increasingly complex and cross-disciplinary as the pharmaceutical industry develops novel drug products and Congress assigns FDA and CEDAR new programs and tasks. Responding to and anticipating these changes often requires new interpretations of existing policy or the development of new policies. Diverse policy needs require an overarching governance structure to provide comprehensive oversight of our policy efforts. To that end, CEDAR established the Strategic Policy Council, or CPC, and it is sponsored by CEDAR's Deputy Director for Regulatory Policy and chaired by ORP's Office Director to enhance management and oversight of policy activities across CEDAR. In addition to ORP, the SPC includes Office or Policy Directors from the Office of New Drugs, Office of Generic Drugs, Office of Pharmaceutical Quality, Office of Translational Sciences, Office of Compliance, Office of Surveillance and Epidemiology, and the Office of Medical Policy. The SPC is also responsible for developing an integrated strategy for CEDAR policy to ensure that policy is decided transparently and implemented in a consistent manner throughout the center. ORP also chairs the CEDAR Policy Council, or CPC, a subcommittee of the SPC, which also consists of representatives from all CEDAR offices. The CPC is responsible for facilitating and tracking the initiation and development of guidance documents and regulations from each office. The CPC is also responsible for engaging in process improvement efforts for the initiation, development, and clearance of policy-related documents as well as responding to data calls made by the Office of Policy in the Commissioner's Office. We know that exclusivity determinations are important to a company's business and drug development plans. CEDAR has an exclusivity board that is currently chaired within ORP and that provides oversight and recommendations regarding exclusivity determinations made by the Center with a primary focus on clarity and consistency of decisions. We often refer to the exclusivity board as the X board. The X board oversees certain exclusivity determinations, including whether exclusivity should be recognized and the appropriate scope of exclusivity. The X board's primary focus has been Hatch-Waxman exclusivity, specifically five-year new chemical entity exclusivity and three-year new clinical investigation exclusivity, but also advised on exclusivity for biological products. The X Board will not review or make recommendations about all exclusivity determinations in these areas, but will assist the center in resolving certain matters, including issues that arise in the context of specific requests for exclusivity and on issues of first impression. The X Board generally has not reviewed 180-day generic drug exclusivity, seven-year orphan drug exclusivity, or six-month pediatric exclusivity, but communicates and works with other groups within FDA responsible for addressing these exclusivity issues as appropriate. The X Board also may evaluate and make recommendations regarding CEDAR's policies and practices relating to exclusivity and maintain records of exclusivity determinations. A significant responsibility for CEDAR is considering and responding to citizen petitions raising issues about CEDAR-related products, and ORP leads this effort for CEDAR. A citizen petition is a vehicle under the law that stakeholders outside of FDA can use to ask FDA to take or not take a particular action or to delay the effective date of any administrative action. Some citizen petitions raise significant policy considerations, and our responses to all petitions are considered final agency actions that can be challenged in court. To successfully defend any court action, FDA must have an adequate administrative record to demonstrate that its decision to grant or deny a petition is not arbitrary or capricious. ORP Regulatory Council lead our evaluation of petitions, working with relevant subject matter experts and drafting our responses to those petitions. 
The petitions and FDA responses are available on the internet at www.regulations.gov. While many regulatory policy issues may be unique to a given center, increasingly more policy matters are becoming cross-cutting involving several centers and offices at the FDA level. ORP serves a key role in interfacing with the Office of Policy and Office of Chief Counsel in the Commissioner's Office on broader policy and its implementation in CEDAR and with other FDA centers on cross-cutting policy issues. This includes implementing presidential executive orders, discussing significant policy matters with the Office of Chief Counsel, and matters relating to external clearance of CEDAR policy documents. Cross-cutting policy issues that we work on with other centers include real-world evidence, digital health technologies, and artificial intelligence. Now that we have an overview of CEDAR's regulatory policy work and ORP's key role in facilitating that work, I'll turn to highlight some of CEDAR's overall response to the COVID-19 pandemic and ORP's role in that response. Since the pandemic began last year, CEDAR has taken an all hands on deck approach to responding to the pandemic, including working with stakeholders to develop promising therapies to treat or prevent COVID-19, addressing potential and actual drug shortages, ensuring the safety and supply of hand sanitizers, authorizing certain products for emergency use, addressing the impact of the pandemic on ongoing and future clinical trials, and issuing at a record pace guidance documents to help guide stakeholders. CEDAR's COVID-19 response required rapid policy development with significant involvement from ORP, including either drafting guidances or being part of the guidance development team, evaluating EUA requests and decisions from a regulatory policy perspective, and providing counseling on potential flexibilities that may be appropriate during the pandemic. I am one of the ORP leads for our pandemic response, and I work on matters relating to COVID-19 product development, emergency use authorizations, and COVID-19 clinical trials, including statistical policy considerations. One of the most important avenues for assisting our stakeholders during the COVID-19 pandemic has been through issuing guidance documents with targeted recommendations for addressing COVID-19 related issues. To date, CEDAR has issued over 30 COVID related guidance documents and ORP has contributed to each one of them. During the COVID-19 public health emergency, we have had a unique process for issuing COVID-19 guidances. Given the emergency circumstances, COVID-19 related guidances are issued without prior public comments because FDA has determined the prior public participation is not feasible or appropriate. However, the public can comment on these guidances using the docket number referenced in each guidance. Many of these guidances are relevant while the pandemic is ongoing, including certain regulatory flexibilities, but will sunset when the public health emergency terminates. Other guidance documents, such as the guidance on developing COVID-19 therapies, reflect the agency's current thinking and will be relevant beyond the termination of the public health emergency. Therefore, the agency announced with the issuance of those guidances that we plan to reissue them in draft after the public health emergency, taking into consideration any comments we receive on the guidance. We are mindful that our stakeholders are curious about whether CEDAR plans to reissue guidances that will sunset on termination of the public health emergency and extend certain temporary policies. CEDAR continues to evaluate its response to the pandemic and will consider all variables when discussing post-pandemic policy work. Another critical tool that CEDAR has utilized to address the public health emergency is our authority to issue emergency use authorizations or EUAs. You will hear from my colleagues in CEDAR in more detail about the EUA process and the criteria necessary to issue, revise, or revoke an EUA. At a high level, during emergency situations, such as a public health emergency, FDA has the authority under Section 564 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act to authorize the emergency use of unapproved products or unapproved uses of approved products if certain criteria are met. In CEDAR, program offices and ORP from a regulatory policy perspective are significantly involved in reviewing EUA requests and CEDAR's review documents, 
authorized labeling, and letters of authorization. Another significant initiative we have implemented during COVID-19 is around transparency. CEDAR understands that transparency around our EUA decisions are important to ensure that the public has confidence in our decisions and in using products authorized for emergency use appropriately. Therefore, CEDAR intends to be as transparent as possible about the scientific basis for recommending that a drug or biological product be authorized for emergency use or later revised or revoked. When a CEDAR regulated product is authorized for emergency use, we intend to the extent permitted by law to make, the pub, to make public the center's review of the scientific data and information supporting a decision to issue, revise, or revoke an EUA. Our goal is to disclose information from our EUA review documents as appropriate and consistent with our longstanding practice of, po of posting scientific reviews after new drug and biological product approvals. We may redact certain information that is exempt from disclosure under the Freedom of Information Act, such as trade secrets or other information identified by the EUA requesters that is exempt under FOIA. The redacted information may vary depending on the type of data contained in the reviews and whether the requester consents to the release of information that is exempt under FOIA. We have tried to make it easy as possible for stakeholders to find the EUA memos we post by creating a separate page on CEDARS portion of the FDA website where the memos are grouped by product, action date, and action type. On the screen, I've provided a link that will take you directly to that page. In summary, I've outlined broadly how CEDAR has mechanisms to develop and coordinate policy across CEDAR and how ORP plays a critical role in creating and shaping that policy. Due to the emergency circumstances of COVID-19, CEDAR had to develop policy on a rapid basis and ORP is involved in all aspects of CEDAR's response. We look forward to continuing our efforts to achieve CEDAR's and FDA's mission of helping improve the lives of all Americans. I've included my contact information if you have any questions about what I've shared today. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And now some challenge questions. Number one, ORP's work includes A, chairing the Strategic Policy Council, B, creating and supporting CEDAR policy initiatives, C, evaluating and responding to citizen petitions, or D, all of the above. I'll give you a moment to think. And the answer is all of the above. The next challenge questions. Which of the following statements is not true? A, ORP is significantly involved in CEDAR's COVID-19 pandemic response. B, FDA has issued numerous guidance documents to assist our stakeholders during the COVID-19 pandemic. C, transparency is not an important part of the EUA process or D, information disclosure policy and processing disclosure requests are an important part of ORP's work. Again, a couple of seconds to think, and the answer is C. Transparency, transparency is absolutely an important part. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much for that very helpful presentation and sharing some of your insights. We now have a lot of questions for you, Stephanie. So if anyone has questions additionally, you can put them in the Q&A chat pod and we'll get to as many as we have time for. So Stephanie, your first question is, are there any regulatory policies stating that annual reports are required for an authorized EUA product? Thanks for that question. So EUAs don't operate like traditional approvals and the scope of the authorization, all, all the terms of conditions are written in the letter of authorization and they can also be reflected in the fact sheet. So any type of safety reporting requirements or annual reporting requirements will be on a case by case basis crafted and tailored specifically to the EUA product in question. Okay, great, thank you. Another question from the audience. During the pandemic, FDA was able to publish a lot of guidances at a very fast speed. 
can industry expect that the pace will continue after the pandemic ends? That's a really great, great, great question. Uh, the answer to that is simply no. Uh, the way that we were able to publish those guidance on such a rapid basis is because we uh, were a 24-7 operation for a very long time, and, and it feels as though we are still. Uh, and that was, of course, to meet the emergency circumstances. All of our guidances also were published as direct to final guidances. And so there was a different regulatory process for that. We always strive to put out our policy as quickly as possible, but the pace by which we are operating right now is just not sustainable for the long haul. Thank you, Stephanie. Could you um, explain whether ORP is involved in the decision about whether to approve a marketing application? Sure, I'm happy to. That really depends on the types of issues that are present in the regulatory decision being made. Uh, some approvals are fairly straightforward. Others involve significant issues around whether the application meets appropriate standards, including accelerated approval pathways. There may be REMS decisions that are involved, labeling issues that are involved, and to the extent that the applications involve regulatory policy issues, we would be very much involved with that. Great, thank you. Another question for you. How is CEDAR incorporating real-world evidence to support regulatory decisions? That's also a great question. Uh, FDA is committed to realizing the potential of real-world evidence in regulatory decision-making. We have published a framework for, the, for a real-world evidence program. We published that in December 2018, and that's available on FDA's website. In that framework, we talk about how we will be evaluating the use of, of real-world evidence in regulatory decision-making, and since publishing that, we have been hosting several meetings and workshops, and we have many demonstration projects in the works. We also have on our guidance agenda this year several guidances that will be coming out, including the use of electronic health record and electronic claims data in various different types of trial designs. Of note, we did approve a supplemental indication uh, for the drug tacrolimus or Prograf uh, on Friday, and the efficacy determination was supported by a real-world evidence observational study, uh, and we have some communications about that decision out there that may be of interest. Okay, great, thank you. And another audience question for you. Um, do you have any updates as far as the status on drug development programs that the general public might be interested in? Well, thanks for that question. While, while we would love to be able to share with the public details regarding pending applications, uh, FDA laws and regulations generally prohibit us from doing that while an application is pending. And there are important considerations there uh, for sponsored data that is confidential commercial information and trade secrets, and also pr to protect the integrity of the review. In certain situations, we may have a con commissioner's finding where we believe that public health and safety uh, it overrides keeping certain information confidential, and in those cases, we would really restrict ourselves to revealing information that is a summary of safety and efficacy to avoid public confusion. But that is a very rare circumstances and circumstance, and otherwise, we take very seriously the protection of information that we are trusted with. Thank you, Stephanie. Another question. Has CEDAR been working with the other centers on crafting policy during COVID-19, just making sure that everything is consistent between the centers, or how has that process been working? Uh, yes, we uh, have been working very, very closely across the centers to make sure that our policy is consistent 
We also have, uh, we have several committees now that we have organized to make sure that our public health response is coordinated. We work closely with our colleagues in the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research and the Center for Devices and Radiological Health. Okay, great. I think that maybe all we have one more time. We have time for just one more question today. So, and that question from the audience is As far as FDA policy is concerned during the pandemic, how, how can they make this more predictable? So, I mean, it's a good question, uh, but essentially is how do you make the unpredictable predictable? Uh, and that is actually very difficult to do. We all have been learning together during the pandemic about how to respond and how to develop products efficiently. What we are doing and will continue to do is evaluate our response to the pandemic and try to pull out lessons learned so that if we do have another pandemic, we will already be prepared based on the knowledge that we have right now. Great, thank you, Stephanie. That makes a lot of sense. And we really appreciate you taking time out of your day to present and research and prepare the slides as well as take a lot of uh, questions from our audience. So thank you for that.